I wouldn't say so because uh, there are people who at a young age are very mature. The other people who even in old age are still very childish. So it's a matter of who the leader is, what their experiences are, what their ideas are, uh, their willingness to listen to other people, their willingness to engage with the people who they disagree with. These are far more important than uh, whether their age is in the 60s or 70s or whether their age is in the 30s. One of Kenya's most famous leaders, greatest leaders, Tom Boyer, uh, was I believe a cabinet minister in his early 30s. But two of our best presidents, to my mind, that is Jomo Kenyatta and Mwai Kibaki, both became president in their 70s. So age isn't the central thing. The central thing is what had this person experienced? What was his agenda? How effective was he in pursuing this agenda? And that has nothing to do with age. Okay, to my mind, the emphasis on youth in leadership is little more than a gimmick. If I was in my 20s or early 30s and I wanted to be an MP, that's how I'd talk too. Young leaders, new ideas, fresh ideas, fresh approach, I would talk exactly that way. Doesn't mean there's any substance in it. Because I remember in 2002 when we had an election, the consensus was that it should be an elderly person who would go for one term and then let younger people have a chance. And the choice between Moody Awori, who later became vice president, Simeon Yachai, who lost the presidency, and uh, Mwai Kibaki, who won and then went on for two terms. Okay? So at different times, countries focus on different things. Sometimes people get this wave of, let's have a young leader who will come up with a new way and who's charismatic and so on. And at other times they say, no, we want someone with experience, who won't make mistakes, who understands that this is the lives and livelihoods of ordinary people at stake. So it depends on what narrative you're selling. But to me, the sort of emphasis on youth, which people like Johnson Sakaja, who by the way is nominated, after he's elected, I'll take him seriously. Now he's just a nominated MP like so many others. Uh, it's a very good way to get elected. Tell people that you need youth, you need vigor, you need enthusiasm, you need new ideas, you need digital. Yes, uh, our current president, Uhuru Kenyatta, his deputy, William Ruto, came in calling themselves digital. They failed to deliver on those computers they promised. You don't hear them talk about digital anymore. So these are just campaign gimmicks. Well, I wouldn't say it's intolerant, it's politics. Because older people also sometimes dismiss young people. You joined politics the other day, what do you know? I have been in parliament for 20 years, I have been in parliament for 15 years, I know a lot more than you. Kibaki, when he was eventually uh, elected president, had been an MP for, I think, 40 years. So people could have said, you're old, forget it. But other people said, no, he has experience, he knows what to do. Uh, Jomo Kenyatta had been agitating for Kenyan independence for 30 or 40 years before he eventually got it. He had experience. So there are situations in which experience really counts. Then we have young leaders who are very articulate, who are very modern, like Tom Boyer was much loved in the West. He appeared in Time magazine, he appeared in, I forget which, uh, very popular uh, uh, TV programs of those days. He was very photogenic, very aggressive. So he appealed to a lot of people as well. I would personally say you need a mixture of the two, but I'd also mention that at the end of the day, anyone who is over 50 will always argue for experience. Anyone who is slightly over 40 or below 40 will always argue for youth. And it's the same thing. They are trying to get your votes. And it's actually very hard to know when it's a good idea to have an experienced person and when it's a good idea to have a young uh, person with new ideas and a new approach.